what's going on over there other than everybody's dumb. The instant you step out of line, you say something that they don't like and they don't like you personally, they're going to use all those pre-existing laws and they're going to use it on you. A woman exposed her male genitalia to women and underage girls. That's what happened. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. Um, <laughs> It's super, it's super cringe. He's showing us love. I've opened the wrong thing. Eric Butler is here with me. I promise you, there he is, live from San Francisco or something. <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona with mountains. Yeah, in the desert. With the, uh, in the, the desert. The, the mountain range there in the back. I guess this is what they call the valley. I'm supporting Grit, the, Brittany uh, Griner and the Phoenix Mercury, right? Big fans, big fans, big big fans. All seventeen people. Um, I guess we could talk about her first. Um, maybe not. Maybe we should push her down <laughs> down the list of importance here. You can go right to Hunter Biden if you want. Uh, Eric Butler, Report dot com. Myself, Andrew Shapados of Rebel News. Huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> is that very is that the Biden, French? Str- that's the French in me. Hunter Biden is strike. Strikes again, he strikes back. Who knows what it is, Eric? But we got more text. What we don't have yet is last night, um, somebody hacked his iCloud, which for some reason was like 350 gigs worth of stuff. All I saw so far was his bank account statement from a trust fund that he had from Joe Biden. It was, it was, if real, it was Joe Biden's like trust for children. And it's just funny that his own son has like a trust fund in the name of like a charity if that's real but it was only like 45 grand in the account it's just interesting that he would upload like bank statements to his cloud i don't understand it's like he must really think he's untouchable but i guess he is isn't he he absolutely is and is it's just a another example of this awful I mean, just absolutely awful uh, two-tier justice system. We have the bodega story, which we'll get to, which is another uh, great example of that. And we see it every day. It's not new. Um, but yes, he he does believe he's untouchable. But mm-hmm. outside of that, um, he's a crackhead. So he doesn't know what's going on. He seems I, mean, to, I saw somebody comment, why does Hunter Biden videotape himself every time he smokes crack or whatever it might be could be meth sometimes who knows but i guess when you're that rich and powerful you're just like i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a bit where i videotape myself every time i smoke crack um i should also mention off the top here eric that um i am my youtube channel is has a copyright it doesn't have a copyright strike a community guideline strike which is why we're not uh live streaming on there today if anybody's wondering why it's not on there um, a Chris Sky interview, as in the anti-lockdown guy that I did like a year and a half ago, got flagged for medical misinformation. <clears throat> and the appeal process, it's just a joke. It's like, you can watch it now and see what you've done wrong. And do you have any yeah. comments? And mine was like, why did this take so long? And why is there no warning? Why would there not be a warning where it's like, this goes against our guidelines, please delete it within 14 days and you won't get a strike. No, it's just... Anything that you've done in the past, we won't tell you that it's bad, but we're going to strike you now for it. And you can't go live or post anything for a week. So I had a video scheduled on there that I that just gets put as private. And we can't live stream on there. Luckily, we are on uopod.com and live streaming there as well on Twitter. So hopefully everybody's getting their Twitter on um, today. Hunter Biden, Eric. Well, hang on just a second. The the censorship is just getting (laughs) out of control. I'm sorry. I mean, you're dealing with it. I'm dealing with it on YouTube and Instagram. And it's just proof that their movement, their their regime is completely astroturf, right? It's not real. If it were real, then all of these conversations would be fair to have and they would be, quote, debunked. But they won't even let that happen. I was uh, I'm still dealing with a strike from a video that I posted a year and a half ago with very few words in it. It was like literally just B-roll of, it was it was even titled Scenes from the Capitol. It was just me taking iPhone video of things that were happening in Washington, D.C. on that terrible, worse than 9-11, worse than Pearl Harbor <laughs> day. Um, and it, it took a year and a half for them to say, oh, this is misinformation, not medical misinformation, just misinformation. It was simply... There's no there's no interviews in it. There's nobody saying, 
oh, fraud, you, you know, or, I don't even know what words we're even allowed to say anymore, but it was basically just B-roll and a year and a half later, uh, they, they strike the channel for it. So it's, it's just complete astroturf, bro. It's totally fraudulent. And, um, you know, I guess, I guess maybe we'll, maybe can we live stream on rumble? I don't, I don't know if, I don't even know if I can even say the word rumble on YouTube. We'll just be, <laughs> we'll probably have a struck down. And just last thing here, I promise very quickly. I mean, obviously they have a team of people who are paid to go back through years of video to find one thing to, to strike you for. I mean, why did it take 18 months for this to happen? I don't know. I have a conspiracy theory. That's a bit of it, bit of because we're getting momentum here. And, uh, I know I've expressed before how my YouTube channel loses a couple hundred every month. We finally reached a point where it's gaining some. It's against the algorithm where it's like 60 loss per month and then it goes to like 100 loss per month. And now we're starting to get like plus a couple per month. Like it's fi it, it didn't dip below like 43,000. Like it's been going down by uh, it's gone down by like 6,000 ever since they demonetized me the first time. But um, I I have the theory that we're starting to get a little bit more momentum and they want to try to put a stop to that. And uh, who knows? There's probably like an order, like take care of the huge channels. And then if you guys have time, go for some of the smaller channels. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe they I, just I put in see. a Chris guy. Somebody who's like, let's put in Chris guy as a keyword and uh, find out stuff about that. So I uh, Jill Biden, the first lady who I believe is Hunter's aunt or sorry, not aunt, his stepmother. It's his father's wife. I think it's his stepmother. And uh, he called her a vindictive moron and much, much worse, according to the Daily Wire. Text obtained by The Sun, of course. Those British newspapers love Joe Biden and Epstein and Clinton stuff. They're very good at it. The now 52-year-old degenerate lashing out. Okay, we got to find out who wrote this then. Uh, Greg Wilson, I'm not familiar with him. Um, <laughs> lashing out at his stepmother after a family feud in late 2018. At one time, Hunter Biden called Jill Biden a selfish, entitled, <laughs> see you next Tuesday. Um, <laughs> okay, is that terror on the prayer we're getting promoted by here? Um, another text to his uncle, James Biden. I guess I can look more forward at the screen. Hunter Biden recounted a spat with the future first lady in which he struck a barrage of low blows. Quote, and you do know the drunkest I've ever been is still smarter than you could ever even comprehend. And you're a shut grammar teacher i think he's supposed to say a shit grammar teacher and he spelled yeah. that wrong that wouldn't survive one class in my gra iv graduate program quote <laughs> he wrote so go f yourself jill all let's all agree i don't like you any more than you like me oh man is there anything else in this the bad one stuff jill Biden's insistence that hunter get help for his well chronicled drug addiction his son said text messages were found on the laptop so we're still getting leaks from laptop stuff like they've got a storyboard out and says let's drop some hunter biden stuff today um but like i mentioned last night there was new stuff and i'm wondering if anybody has that yet um, that's I think the that's 4chan it. leak like some 4chan guys got in there or something right exactly they got into his icloud password somehow and there's hundreds of gigs of stuff so people are going through that now which of course People will uh, tell you it's illegal, but uh, like Chris Cuomo, uh, it's illegal unless you're getting it through us. And technically, Eric, we are journalists, so it's not illegal for you or I to, to download it. Even though I haven't because I don't understand how to use 4chan and I click on something <laughs> and it just leads me to somebody else's post. And I'm like, what am I doing? I don't use any of the chans, unfortunately. So I'll have to wait until the sun or something publishes that, I guess. Yeah. And um, I think now I might have a little bit of a conspiracy about this as well. Um, uh -oh. Well, I think we're hearing rumblings. Obviously, we're, we heard that uh, Hillary might be back in action. Uh, right. And even the people there's a lot of people even on the left, like as crazy as a lot of those people are, they know that Hillary is not the answer. Um, so mm -hmm. there's rumblings about Hillary coming back. And of course, there's rumblings that Donald Trump is going to Mm -hmm. announces candidacy early and people are saying that it might even be a Trump DeSantis ticket. Uh, of course, uh, Trump is no longer on good terms with Pence and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, like you said, they're storyboarding this out because I think, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it around Trump's original 
uh, campaign announcement that, you know, Podesta emails and stuff happen. So none of this is by mistake, left or right. They, they plan this stuff out. Um, it's all theater. And it doesn't, it, as we alluded to earlier, I don't know how much worse the Hunter Biden stuff can get. Because <laughs> no nobody, I mean, this guy could be smoke, literally smoking crack with an underage Russian prostitute. And they would still tell us that, uh, you know, the Access Hollywood tape is the worst thing to ever happen in American politics. So obviously the mainstream media is going to go to bat for this guy, but it is a little peculiar because I mean, I don't, we don't know, like it could be tomorrow that Trump will announce. I mean, at the, at the clip they're sending out emails, you might assume that something is going to be announced (laughs) soon. Um, So I think uh, it's probably a little bit orchestrated, um, but unfortunately there, I mean, Joe Biden's the president. There's nobody. Joe Biden is quote unquote the president, but we all know that he can't put together a sentence. We have the clips of him, you know, reading the teleprompter ver- uh, verbatim and all sorts of things. But there's n- the, the regime. I mean, he there's there's, there's nobody. There's nobody that to question him. it. There's nobody to stop it. It can't happen. So there's there's nobody above him to say, all right, bro, you've had enough time to like Boris Johnson stepping down. You would think Joe Biden would have done this. But of course, the the machine won't let that happen. Let's see if we can get this to play for once. It is noteworthy that the percentage of women who registered to vote. Almost vote and cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage. Then no, the men who do so. End of quote. Repeat there the line. It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to see. End of quote. Repeat the line. We'll we'll get it. Let's see if it works this way. Women are not yeah. without electoral power. It is noteworthy that the or not almost. I think the percentage I mean, of women who register to vote and cast a ballot is. Con- It's like wonder you consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so. End of end of quote. Repeat the line, Eric. So it's literally like you can see it in here is in his inflection that he's just going to read no matter what it is the same way. End of quote. Repeat the line. Like he's got the same cadence on everything. Travel across Middle Earth. Kill the dragons. Like he's going to say <laughs> he's going to say whatever it is he's supposed to say in the same cadence, and that's how you see how like professionally fake somebody is and it's so sad eric it's just so sad to watch an yeah. old man and i i think i have to correct you on the podesta emails those came out i think as the october surprise mm, because okay. remember trump talked about them in the debates so whenever the second debate i think it was where he's like WikiLeaks. okay so it, it had already happened it, it was mm-hmm. out ahead of that okay fair enough fair enough and i remember because i was going through some of them the other day showing somebody who hadn't read a lot of them before. And it's so hard to remember all the terrible things. Um, It wasn't Tunisia. It might have been. But there was a country that paid to get up, uh, gave the Clinton Foundation a donation and got off the terror watch list. There was, of course, all the pizza-related maps and stuff that we won't talk about on a handkerchief. Um, Pizza and hot dogs. The sixty-five thousand dollars worth of hot dogs that had to be flown in from Chicago to the White House for some reason. The pool parties. Um, there is the emails where they ask a whole bunch of staff members, "Does anyone want to be the ambassador of this? Does anybody have an interest in doing this? It's a million dollars a year, even if you're not interested. You can still we can still just assign you to it. Um, stuff like that. So if you go back in the WikiLeaks archive and just start typing in keywords, there's a whole mess of stuff you can. Um, still find to this day and i'm sure a lot of it will be completely new to you if you haven't read it in six years since it came out having said that i'm reminded of chris cuomo saying that um it's illegal unless you get it from us which is technically true but they just didn't want you to like once it's out there it's out there nobody's going to come after you for reading something on twitter you know what i mean and it reminds me that chris cuomo is coming back as you sent to me (laughs) i'll try to find that on twitter in a moment but Chris Cuomo is coming back, I guess, in some capacity. And his like promo thing is like three frames. And one of them is him smoking a cigar. Another one of is of him flexing. <laughs> and the other one is also him like shirtless in some way, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, little Fredo, uh, you know, 
I I applaud you because I, I I I not to be disrespectful as much as I can't stand Chris Cuomo or Andrew. Um, it it uh it often like it's so ingrained in me that I want to call him Fredo. So shout you know shout out for keeping it professional on that level. Of course, um, but it. the guy is just um, I mean, in those things, if we, even if we think about okay, Andrew Cuomo, uh, who completely ruined the state of New York and, you know, shut, shut everything down to say, I distinctly remember him saying, if it saves just one life, of course he did the whole nursing home thing, which if you ask me, agent, yeah. Um, (laughs) the nursing home thing I actually think was far more sinister than even we want to believe, right? Like you really want me to believe that, uh, you know, Cuomo is putting these old folks into these, into these homes and it just, it just spread like wildfire. I don't know, man. I think, I think it was a little bit more sinister than that. Obviously I can't prove it, but if, if I recall correctly, maybe you can uh, correct me on this as well. I mean, he basically got fired for colluding with his brother to sweep, make him sound better. Yeah. And they were in the, they were working on, you know, giving him media training and we're all just supposed (laughs) to believe that this, uh, this literal family is not going to like, I mean, it goes without saying if Donald Trump Jr. were on Fox news five nights a week, we wouldn't hear the end of it, but for whatever reason, this is okay. And you know, they do their Cuomo brother comedy hour with the giant Q-tip and all that stuff. And uh, now after I was, has it been a year? How long is it? How long has he been gone? I don't don't know. Yeah. So like, look at this, two of his three photos that he uses, are him flexing or shirtless? Yeah, is he doing like a is, is he is he coming back as a a, a fitness influencer? Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. No, because because even a fitness influencer wouldn't wouldn't you know be puffing on a cigar in there. Yeah. So I don't know, man. This guy, this this whole thing is a mess, and I'm so like. I'm just Two so three tired. Things. One's flexing and one's just him shirtless, like this 50-something-year-old man. And Tucker always would make fun of him for like constantly posting stuff like this, but I didn't know it was this bad. Like your big comeback, two of the three. First of all, it's in black and white because you don't want people to see the grayness in your hair and your beard. God bless me. <laughs> and this, you just want to be shirtless. Like, I guess the uh, the Guido in him has to come out in some way, right? Yeah, and uh, and we and we saw that too, right? When he, oh, I'll throw you down these stairs or whatever he said, mm-hmm. and uh, just all sorts the of biker things. altercation. Yeah, yeah, and we're just we're just supposed to sit here and think like, oh yeah, there's nothing. Uh, it's all all in the level. It all makes sense. It's like, dude, we can. We're not all as stupid as you think we are. We know MSNBC that MSNBC maybe. Uh huh. I think he's going to just, he's going to go, because remember, you do remember too, when he, uh, he kind of went off script on, on like his own radio show or podcast or whatever he was doing and kind of admitted that he didn't like working at CNN. Do you remember that? No. He, he went off script like very briefly and, and kind of had like a, almost a moment of clarity. You could Google (laughs) that. And he, uh, basically said something along the lines of he didn't really like working for CNN. He walked it all back. And went back to the show like, you know, like nothing ever happened. But my guess is he'll he's going to he's it's probably honestly, he's probably just going to end up on YouTube like. Well, he'll probably come out with a podcast, if I have to guess, and like a video one. And he'll be getting he'll probably do like what they all do when they come out with new podcast and have Megan Kelly on. She's the big uh, line tower or like Piers Morgan or something like that. Yeah, he'll have somebody who's like. And almost Safe. down the middle, like, yeah, somebody who has weak appeal from both sides. Oh, I think we're being joined by somebody. We are live from the Netherlands Special in the guess? Dutch uprising. Truck how, how, uprising. We, how, how do we change that? Just, 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 Vertical change fine if camera. you guys want to have that. Vertical <laughs> fine, yeah? I think, for this. Vertical's yeah. fine, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Let's we get in. Really how you doing? Cool. We, wanna, we can go full screen on you if you want to turn it. On, uh, uh, how yeah, do we turn it? Cool. Two sex guys. I'm like a job. boomer. <laughs> I'm like a boomer trying to work out my camera. Hang on. What's going on here? We can <laughs> keep it vertical <laughs> if you want. How do I? How do I get all the off? Just keep it. Just keep yeah. It. Okay. Sorry about that, okay. boomer. 
<laughs> so tell us where you guys are, how long you've been there, and what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Shall I take lead on the first bit? Okay. So currently, we're in the center of Amsterdam. As you can see, some lovely canals here. Um, we've been covering the Dutch farmer uh, uprising in the Netherlands, which has sparked... Well, this has been going on technically since 2019, but it's really escalated now to the point where there's a lot of traction uh, across the Netherlands. Uh, the Dutch farmers are not happy because of government overreach from not only the Dutch government, but the World Economic Forum, which is pulling the strings. Um, they want to take 30% of the farmers' lands because they want to cut on nitrogen emissions. <laughs> some random uh, element from the periodic table. It's not CO2 <laughs> anymore. It's nitrogen now. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. So their their idea of cutting that is to take thirty percent of um, farmers' lands, basically, um, which means cutting livestock. Uh, <laughs> just cutting basically everything. So, and as you know, the Netherlands is a huge exporter in food and supply chains. So, if these things go through, if this, if these proposals and bills go through, you're well. I know. How yeah, can well, you simplify it? The, like the interesting thing about talking to people here, even in Amsterdam, because we've we've been spending most of our time outside of Amsterdam. So a lot of the protests that are happening are happening outside of it, um, like two hour and a half, two hours outside of the city. Sometimes even further than that. And um, a lot of the people that live in the more rural areas, they truly believe that the people in Amsterdam. It's a city, right? It's, I think it's the biggest city in the Netherlands, and they truly believe that the people here don't understand what's going on. They don't understand where their food com comes from. But surprisingly, everyone, pretty much everyone we spoke to today knows that something is seriously not right with what's going on with the farmers. It's, I compare it to the truckers, right, in Ottawa. Because when we would go around Ottawa talking to, you know, random civilians, people, local residents, you know, people that aren't necessarily part of the protest. It was pretty much the complete opposite. They hated the truckers. It was real nasty. But here, it's here. It's different. Oh, did he freeze? Oh, getting the bad connection there. Here it's different, he says. I believe it's FarmerRebellion.com. Let's see if it checks them back in and out. Um, but what I'm seeing, Eric, what I'm seeing, Eric, we'll just let it uh, linger there for a second. What I'm seeing, Eric, is that um, their prime minister there, he's saying all the taglines of all the WEF stuff. Like I saw, and, and people are just starting to notice all of this. Um, he's saying the big Build Back Better Agenda 2030. And now that everybody's focusing on the Netherlands, everybody's sort of seeing these videos that are exposing that this guy was basically like a justin trudeau and there's a really good clip i think i sent you where um an mp was saying that he was asking him how he felt about the, the great reset book and everything and and um the policy suggestions that are in there and the prime minister responds with i don't know the material of that book so i can't tell you wait and wait wait MP... that was the prime minister yeah, I just that, I thought that was just like a random uh, like kind of, you know, Congress person or something. I no, that was it. the MP, the member wow. of parliament, um, which is basically like a member of the House um, mm -hmm. in the U.S. asking the prime minister, because in like. Whatever kind of part, like when you have a parliamentary system, the prime minister is also supposed to be there and and act like one of because the prime minister is also a member of parliament so what happens is you have a member of parliament and they get assigned basically as the leader of the party and they become the prime minister when the party wins and gotcha. so he's still like a member of parliament and but they like yeah so and then he's like how, well how can you say that you don't know the contents of the book when you actually sent a letter to klaus schwab saying how great of a book it is and how this is a great blueprint for the future and he's like oh, we don't all remember what's in books that we get sent and we just thank them. And it's like, how can you 
tell him that it's great content. So either you're lying to your overlord Klaus Schwab or you're lying to us right now. So it seems to me that the wheels have been in motion in the Netherlands for some time. And now what's happening is that they want, like they said, like 30% of their nitrogen emissions, which um, to my understanding means they're going to start saying these farm, like you farmer, you have to sell your farmland to the government and cease and cease farming on that land so we can lower our emissions so we can meet the goals that Klaus Schwab wants us to meet. It's the insane thing to say on the surface because it's like group of unelected people who we haven't voted for have just arbitrarily said like this is our goal for the the environment. Therefore, people in any given country around the world, you have to do this. Because why? Like nobody voted on this platform. Nobody got together and decided this is what we want for our country. The farmers weren't given any choice in the matter. And it's like, you have to sell your land to the government and they get to decide what to do with the farmland, which is of course a literal form of communism. Every time there's communism in the African countries that have tried it. And of course, Korea and China, they always say we're taking the farmland and we're redistributing it. And it never works out. Of course, never, ever, ever. And it is like cookie cutter communism when they come for the farmers first, the people and literally seize the means of production, Eric Butler of TatumReport.com. Yeah, um, I will say this, though. I think um, I think you're actually maybe giving them, like, to say, oh, well, we, we have to do this to uh, to limit our nitrogen or CO2 or whatever emissions that they want to do. I, 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 I mean, you're almost giving them too much credit because we know that's not <laughs> really what it's about. I mean, well, like, yeah, we could, they'll, they'll tell you, like, oh, yeah our emissions, we got to save the planet, but really it's just about controlling you. So it has nothing to do with like, they're going to, Oh yeah, we're going to save the world. And all, like, come on, bro, give us a break. Um, this is, yeah, it's 100% to W E F style communism, eat the bugs, live in the pod, all that stuff. And there's just no, there's, there's, they just will not let up off the gas, right? We just did two years of lockdown, come out of it. And I don't know what the lockdowns were like in Amsterdam. Maybe they weren't as harsh. Who, who really knows? But uh, to come out of that and then just say, oh, well, and then they try to they try to basically link that to this climate thing. Like, well, because I mean, remember there was, a, it wasn't even that long ago we were seeing headlines about how uh, maybe I think it was Australia that was going to, there might be, climate induced lockdowns and they just try it's just non-stop and like i said before it's like we're dealing like here in the united states there's clearly um a, a war brewing and we're we're probably you know we're already in it of course it's a it's in informational war information war um my alex jones is not as good as yours but we can also see the that it's not a world war in the sense that, oh, all these countries are, con you know, there's conflict and Nazis and anything like that. It's like every single nation is dealing with their own form of it. And the, the people that are trying to change the way of these, the regular citizens of each country are linked to that same group. So obviously Klaus Schwab or maybe George Soros in part or whatever is actually happening. It's, um, it, it's, it's really, it's really scary, bro. And I don't know how we how we claw our way out of it if if at all possible do we just do we just sit down and eat the bugs like they tell us to i don't know <laughs> well we've got them back now thanks for rejoining us guys we we're just talking about the prime minister in the netherlands and how all these videos are coming out thanks in part to our pal key and simone where he's literally spouting all these wef guidelines like the agenda 2030 and build back better and everything mm. do you think this is and i saw a clip about a. Uh, a concert like chanting for the farmers Lincoln was mentioning how much more support do you think people on, do you think that people on the ground there seem to have this concept of what and where this agenda is actually coming from and these policy yes. suggestions are coming from yeah um, I think a lot of the farmers are very awake uh, they're, they're very awake to uh, what the World Economic Forum is um, uh, the whole entity and um you know where it's going to head to sorry about that um <laughs> so it's <laughs> it's interesting because you have some farmers that don't know what the world economic forum is don't know about agenda 2030 but then you have some that are super awake to it and that 
you know, mention the great reset and say, well, this this is clearly by design. Mark Root is, of course, really accelerating these policies um, on behalf of the WEF. And what's fascinating, it's funny because we were sitting around the table earlier and you had a Brit, a Yank, Canadian and a Dutch sitting around the table saying, hang on a minute, we're all experiencing these strange happenings in our countries. Uh, but we're all, obviously, we're all from different you know, areas of the world, yet the same thing is happening everywhere, which is so strange. So it's very hard not to say that this is not by design, uh, when clearly it is. Yeah. And, uh, Eric, anything reckon, you want to ask them? Well, I was Go just going to say, uh, like you said, when you have all these people from different parts of the world realizing that something strange is happening... And then a simple, uh, I forget who said it, but basically like it's become to the point where we've gotten to the point where a simple pattern recognition will turn you into a conspiracy theorist. And, and yeah. they just, and, and, and fortunately, and that's why we see nonstop censorship, me and Andrew are both dealing with uh, YouTube guideline strikes and, and demonetization on Instagram and all sorts of things. So as soon as you start to realize a little bit of that, uh, hey, this doesn't really add up, or uh, maybe I don't want to do that. Then they will throw throw you into this bubble. But on the plus side, I think um, we're more people are really starting to understand that this is completely astroturf, like airdropped from Twitter or something like that. Like these movements, this yeah. this climate stuff, whatever. Like yeah, there's there's a, there's some college girls who really believe it, but for the most part, I know if you drive through the middle of America. And you just talk to random people, they're not going to hop on a climate change bandwagon. Maybe a handful of like, you know, 20 something year old, you know, college sophomore. Yeah. Or something. I don't even know. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it, man. This is really creepy to see uh, everybody or all these countries dealing with a very similar authoritarian government, which is likely run by the same group of people. Well, Lewis, well exactly. Is, um, oh, I was just going to ask. um What's the mainstream media been like there? Are they around at these protests? Have you been, are you privy to any of their coverage? Are they calling it like a conspiracy theory led thing? Or are they actually covering it like in a regular sense? There must be a reason why farmers are all refusing to, to work at this point. I don't know how they would spin that. Let me ask, do you think the Dutch uh, mainstream media, have they been, um, are they been reporting this at all? Like, or are they just sort of complicit to just, you know the the agenda of uh, of the government. Yeah, well, they, sure they report about it, but then they spin it. You know, like uh, the farmer that and these other big companies like um, uh, that have interests in these protests. So that's why they're protesting, and we're trying to yeah smear them with all these you know yeah. accusations of, of not being you know um, uh, 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 yeah. Like conspiracy theories, calling yeah, them yeah. conspiracy theorists. Like the, like... Old, the old, the the oil companies are financing the protests or something. Oh, like that, really? You know? oh, okay. Which is totally ludicrous. I mean, I mean, you can just see that they're actually when they they actually have to sell their their land and, and they they are in absolutely no position. You know, they they they've lost most of them have lost everything already. So yeah, but they're not interested in that story about their lives and the suicides and um, uh, desperation and they're just trying to downplay it like a, yeah. you know they're the same people that were the covid protest and they, they try to make it this, this one right you know, like entity extremist sort yeah. of yeah entity exactly yeah. yeah so they're not going into the countryside that's for sure yeah. They're just sitting at their desk writing these stories about the farmers, and they have no, they have no clue. Sounds a bit similar, doesn't it, guys? Yeah. Um. So only a matter of time before they're just de okay. You can call them a conspiracy theorist, but sooner or later they're gonna just be called racist or whatever, whatever stupid sure. labels they can put on these things. And uh, last thing, uh, and maybe this is a silly question, but you know, I think at least here in the states. Amsterdam is pretty well known for weed. So, like, are, is there anything happening with like weed farmers? Is it do they do they go after them or what's that like? That's a good question. I don't know about that. Do you, from what you know, do you know if um if the government is 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 weed farmers being affected in this weed? Yeah, because obviously like smoking weed. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
no, I mean, because the weed they grow in Holland is usually inside. But they grow mm. it inside, like their houses and stuff. Oh, you know what I mean? It's not. We don't have actually have weed plantations. Oh, here. no, we don't. Oh, That's we big, do in Canada. Uh, <laughs> it's sort of like it's uh, condone. You can you can grow weed, right? But um, it's not like on the land. Ah, no. Mm. Because you need big lights and you need a lot of sun. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like these, <laughs> yeah, you know, no, these, I, I was just curious. Like, lights and it's warm, but it's not. No, I, I know. I don't know. It's it's. I mean, it's such a small. Right. Um, interesting question, though, because I, I don't know. I haven't yeah. heard from them. <laughs> you haven't I haven't either. heard them complaining. Yeah. I think it's well, no, it's just because, oh, like, here, yeah. here in the States, right, like, I think a lot of people here here in the states, like when you say the word Amsterdam, they immediately think like, oh, like we, you know, everybody smokes weed and coffee shops and stuff. So it's just like a stereotypical mm. thing that I think Americans think of when they think of that part of the world. So that's all. Well, they do have yeah. big fields here in Canada. Uh, it's not all inside. So I would think that maybe they they would be seizing them. I just want to mention again that like when the government comes for the farmland. That's pretty much how communism starts in every instance. Yep. When they start coming from yep. the farmland. But uh, it looks Bill like Gates is buying up ours. Bill Gates is buying right. up all the farmland. Yeah. That's correct. All right. Yeah. So the website is farmerrebellion.com, correct, Lewis? Yes, that is farmerrebellion.com. You can visit there, check out all of our reports that we've been doing. Uh, we're constantly staying up, like updated with, with what's going on. And um, you can, of course, if you wanted, donate to help us keep the reports going. Farmrebellion.com. Um, yeah. Last question, <laughs> Lewis and Lincoln. How's the food? What are you eating? <laughs> Go on, Lincoln. I always ask that. this. Yeah. The, you know what? Let's be honest here. We've been working like, I don't even know, like nine, like the past, this was the only, like today we, it wasn't as busy because a lot of the farmers go to church and it was just a little bit less tactic as what we've been doing the previous days. But the past two, three days that we were here, we were up at like 8, 8 a.m. and going pretty much around non the clock, nonstop to yeah. four in the morning. So we were literally eating gas station food. <laughs> <laughs> and then okay. today, yeah, today, uh, to be specific, actually, we were eating authentic Netherlands Gas bitter, bitter station balls. beef sticks, <laughs> <laughs> kind of nice. like the Jack Link's beef sticks you see okay. in America or Canada, but a lot better here. So yeah, that's uh, that's it's it. It's been our diet. Yeah. But today we got right. to eat a little bit better. But you know, gas station cuisine. You know, thanks for watching. It's <laughs> never too late to start eating the bugs, you guys. All right, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Have a wonderful yeah, cheers, night. guys. It's like ten thirty. Keep up the good work, guys. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. guys. Take, Take it easy. Cheers. Bye. And all those British t terms. Oops. There goes Eric. All yeah. right. That was a good, well, a good Eric, little uh, addition. Yeah. It's always nighttime when we get them over in Europe <laughs> and stuff. And we always got to ask what they're eating because I'm interested. And, in, you know, when they were in Geneva, they were eating some terrible food, they said, unless they were close to the Italian side of Switzerland. And then the Western side, they said it was terrible. Italian side uh, on the east, they said it was good. But Eric, the real question here is, why can't men breastfeed, or can they? <laughs> Science explained. <laughs> this is the same magazine, and I and I'm convinced at this point that they're just doing this because absurdity gets them clicks. But um, it's the same magazine that was like, do pride parades have nudity and kink and swearing and drinking? Yes, but you should still take your kid anyway. This is the same magazine as that, fatherly. And hopefully this isn't making the money, but it probably is. But if you want to make money off of being like the worst people in the world, then go ahead. Um, science explains why men can't lactate, lactate, but sometimes do. I was getting into a <laughs> southern accent there, I guess. <laughs> All men have nipples and mammary glands. <laughs> and most of them desire to bond their babies, bond with their babies and give partners a breastfeeding break. What are you talking about? <laughs> like right away, do fathers just be like, I wish I could breastfeed instead. That's the Southern guy again. I wish I could breastfeed instead of my mother, my baby's mama. Dad nipples are merely decorative. Oh my God. I regret opening this, Eric. Suggest it could happen under the right circumstances. Brace yourself, guys. Science is demolishing your last excuses. So, of course, Eric, before we get into this, 
this is obviously part of some sort of trans agenda. Um, the lines are blurred between what a man and a woman is right now on purpose. So anything that they can put out that's going to be supportive of men being able to replace women, because that's what it is. They These people are upset that women don't like them. Um, they want to become women or they want to get rid of them. They want to get rid of their spaces. They want to outswim them. They want to beat them up in mis mixed martial arts. They want to <laughs> wrestle them to the ground in college wrestling. They want to go into their bathrooms. They want to take away their change rooms. They want to destroy women's culture because they're upset at them. That's my opinion. It's one of many opinions I have about this, or maybe I just made it up now. You'll never know. But what this is, is an attempt to replace having to have women breastfeed so that you can say, oh, men can be mothers too, because this is the hot topic right now of men can be women if they want to be. So they can be mothers too, Eric. And what's the, one of the things that are most synonymous with a mother is breastfeeding. They're already working on um, implanting a womb in a man. They're trying to do surgeries for that. Look that up if you want and be disgusted. But now why not say and figure out how we can get uh, men to be breastfeeding, of course, because that way we don't need women at all, right? Uh, trans ideologists. It's just women destroying themselves again, of course, because this was written by a woman. Science is demolishing your last excuses. Pulitzer Prize winning physiologist Jared Diamond wrote somewhat ominously in 1995. So they're digging back to 1995 here, just as I predicted that they're finding anything they can. It's like last week, Eric, on the live streams that I did, I was just predicting so many stories before I even read them. We'll chalk this up again to my genius. Um, <laughs> Charles Darwin agreed, of course, they said, uh, that men can undergo breast development and lactate under special conditions. He, um, Charles Darwin in 1871. It is well known that in the males of all mammals, including man, rudimentary mammae exist, as in your uh, mammary glands. This, these in several instances have become well-developed and have yielded a copious supply of milk. So in freak instances where a male's mammary glands have developed and their breasts produce milk, this is obviously, you know, it can happen all the time, guys. Why not now? Let's medically tell tell people that this is going to happen. In order but to this is what we see with everything, right? Like, this is what we see with everything. They take those little fringe cases, like, oh, well, what about the intersex people? Or what about the <laughs> victims The victims of abuse that should justify every single uh, abortion up until, you know, kindergarten? They take the tiniest little fringe things and try to blow it up. And, oh, well, that just that disproves your... Uh, Everything you've known for the past couple hundred years, or we've known, I should say, we haven't, you know, we haven't been alive for the past couple hundred years, but that's what they do is they take one tiny little thing and say, uh, well, see, that, that disproves everything you thought you knew. It's all wrong because of this one little small instance. We see it over and over again. I feel like they're going to get into um, what's the, when you change somebody's genetic, genetics here. Um, gestation, when the genes on the chromosome 23 kick in creating sex differences but before those sex differences get going they're talking about an embryo here um which is why no matter how you turn out you're stick stuck with nipples cut to puberty when the pituitary glands help those memories mature into in females the result is that female memories became primed for milk production so that any spike in the hormone prolactin causes them to lactate male nipples remain woeful duds so men come into this world with all the right hardware for the job, but puberty sets dads down, sits, uh, sets dads to be dads to be down the wrong path for milk production. The wrong path. So what are we going to say that we should manipulate and put puberty blockers in men so that they could develop milk or something before? Like it may sound ridiculous, but we're in 2022, and we're these are some of the outcomes that I think this article is going to head to. It is almost always a symptom of underlying medical problem or thanks to injections of estrogen and prolactin, which come with a slew of side effects. Male lactation is a known side effect of anabolic steroids and Thorazine, an antipsychotic medication. So there's no yeah. conclusion written here. Still past claims of, from medical anthropologists that men could breastfeed if they stimulated their nipples long enough. Seems highly unlikely, and if a man is able to achieve this by simple suckling, it may be a sign of an underlying condition. So what is the point of this article? That's saying that in freak situations and or, you know, 
weird manipulations of genealogy and uh, puberty that men can breastfeed Eric. Like this, I, I know that given what this place writes, this isn't just a like a Reader's Digest article from 1986 that said, did you know that there have been times where men have been able to breastfeed? No, Fatherly is a magazine that's meant to push a certain agenda. Like, of course, almost anything is, but most people aren't as forward with it as an, a magazine that's promoting, you know, bringing your children to see naked men and drunk people on drugs. Um, <laughs> so at this point, you have to assume that there's a reason behind it. And for all the reasons I just stated, I think that's why they've done it. And there's no conclusion here. It's a, not a very good article when there's no real conclusion. It says, plus, there are probably better uses of your time and your nipples. Oh, that's so cute. Um, and it was originally published in 2017. Now they're re they're re throwing it out there, you know. Now, like, like, because I didn't just go looking for this. Like, they're re. Uh, it's hard for me not to swear. They're pushing it back out like anything they can. They've they the original article di digs back like a hundred years, and now they dig back five years just to try to you know push the envelope a little bit. Now, um, the obvious question here is: Are we going to get an article about how? Well, every now and then a woman can impregnate herself or a woman That's can, right. uh, I mean, it, it just doesn't, it's not a two way street, right? Like, well, in rare circumstances, a woman, uh, an intersex woman can uh, ejaculate and, and impregnate <laughs> like what? It doesn't even make sense. Like this is, is absolutely insane. And it's also, uh, how come we don't, um, I mean, why is it now? Look, I don't have the numbers on this, but I'd say, what is it like seven times out of 10? It's going to be a man who wants to become a woman versus three times out of 10, a woman who wants to become a man. And we see, a uh, right. We see, uh, you know, the, the men who end up in women's prisons, but do we ever, have we ever had a woman who says, Oh, I identify as a man and I want to go to uh, I want to go to Rikers with the rest of the men. Like it just it just doesn't it's happen happening a lot around. now where women want to be men and, and they don't they don't want to try out for the NFL or the NBA or be tried as a man and be punished as a man when it comes to criminal issues. But now we want the man. I mean, this reminds me of was it Meet the Parents? Remember that movie? Like yes, uh, I, I, I can milk anything with nipples. I have nipples. Greg. Right. Can you milk me? I, th I think I have an answer to your question. This is from 2017 to 2020. Of the 1.3 million adults who identify as transgender, 38% are 38.5% are transgender women, so that would be male to female. 35% 35.9% are transgender men, and 25.6% are gender nonconforming. So it's pretty even, frankly. 515,000 to 480,000. I don't really buy that. What's that from? Um, that is from School of Williams Institute School of Law, UCLA. Okay, UCLA. They, I mean, come on. Uh, no, I, I, mean, I, I, I can't prove it. I obviously, I, I can't prove it. But look, everybody's compromised at this point. We're talking about a Southern California university. Give me a break. They're I got another one for you, though. It's opposite opinion. Two years, ago, almost three years ago, various surveys on trans populations have shown male to female transitions are two to four times more likely than female to male. See here. This is the demographics of the transgender population. Um, a study from February 2013. So maybe it's become more popular to go both ways, but originally it was two to four times more. But I think we know the real answer, Eric. Men want to become pretty girls because they're sad. Only men. I don't think, <laughs> and I don't think it's that, um, that it's complex. Not difficult. I mean, yeah, it's not if difficult. you know, if you know a losery guy, and we all have in our lives, maybe we've been friends with them, who knows? But we've all known them in school and in life. A guy that can't get any girls, they become sad, they're lonely, they wish they could have girls. I mean, there's a whole thing called incels, and 99% of them are men. There's like one girl in every incel group. Yeah. What happens when a girl can't get a guy? Well, she becomes more of a nerd, like a uh, sedentary, shut-in nerd who has some sort of, like, she p plays some sort of weird card game or something like that, or she gets into Wiccan or something like that. <laughs> she watches 600-pound life all day long. The the variation, me women are much more easily able to deal with not getting men 
than men are able to deal with not getting women. For whatever reason, we could get into that. It's a whole other show, but um, I think the, when we get down to it, there's pretty obvious reasons why men do things, just like it's pretty obvious why there's so many male feminists out there. It's because they want the attention from the women, and then they always end up being the creepy guys. Um, yep. I think um, I don't want to misname any outlets, but there was that period for a couple of years where a lot of these le far left outlets, and I don't use that term like sparingly, um, or I do use it sparingly to describe some of these outlets, but they ver are very far left, and they ended up having like the guys who were self acclaimed feminists being the criminal sexual harassers and the uh, sexual assaulters. But I digress, Eric. I mean, look at Andrew uh, Cuomo, just on a macro scale, right? Like th this guy who went out there is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna protect abortion until until the baby comes out the birth canal, and then what does he go down on? Sexual harassment case, like of course. Now, and I think, to be honest with you, I think uh, him, him being handsy is probably the least of the problems that New Yorkers had to deal <laughs> with. But but it's just it's it kind of it, on a on a larger scale on a more on a more simplified scale it's pretty it, it seems to sort of fit your um your uh, theory there. Thank you. I just got to adjust my Tim Beebs thing. Make sure everybody can read that. Yeah, no, I don't know what that it's, is. It's uh corduroyed Tim. Horton's Justin Bieber collab, you know. Oh, I was wondering. I was like uh, Biebs, like as in Bieber. Okay, I got it. I that's got right. It. Free Justin and his, uh, you know, it's just uh, his his wife had a g congenital heart disease, and Justin Bieber had all six other things leading to facial paralysis. Even though he's young and super rich and healthy, and could easily prevent you know illnesses at, and see them coming from a long time away, and, you know, his he just gets facial paralysis from time to time mm -hmm. out of nowhere. It happens. It's, uh, it happens. Um, on to some state-sponsored racial art. Now, people were m making some comments about this. Um, it is not paid for by the government. What my point was is that the government is using tax money through by the CBC exists through taxpayer money to promote racist black art. Now, this particular art is supposed to be uplifting to black women in this article, and that's what it focuses on. And one portion of this article focuses on this piece which we'll get to in a second, and we'll get to the artist. How black artists use citational art to build upon one, one another's legacies, Eric. And we'll quickly get to how amazing this art is. Um, there it is. It says, there is no bad luck in the world but white folks. So we can, and it's meant to look like an old motel sign. And here's the explanation for this, Eric. Buckle your seatbelt into how <laughs> like non-complex this is. And... Um, Hold on, let me get this bit bit bigger for everybody here. This is about so they just did one paragraph about this. Jotovia Garys, that's Jotovia Gary is her name. Sculpture, Citational Ethics from Toni Morris in 1987 and made in 2021. Uh, debuted at Art Basel in Miami last November. The neon 9.5 piece mimics the shape and style of the motel signage where Martin Luther King was murdered, but the text is altered. In its place, Gary inserted a quote from Toni Morrison's novel, Beloved. There is no bad luck in the world but white folks. Gary, Gary effectively cites twice. Someone who knows the iconic sign could be transported back to 1968, while the quote, quote could resonate from Vietnam to Vancouver, even if you don't remember Suggs and Schoolteacher. But everything comes together for the viewer who, quote, reads all the references. So what's the excuse for your racist sign, and racist art? Oh, well, Martin Luther King was killed nearby. So it's basically we're taking from a piece of literature that's saying there's no bad luck in the world, but white folks, white folks are the bad luck you witness. And so because I've invoked Martin Luther King, my racism is OK. Let's switch that around, Eric. Let's take a, an instance where a, a white person was killed by a black person. And I'm going to say, let's take a time for when Bernie Sanders marched down the street and there is a for civil rights and there is a sign over there. And I said, there's. I'm going to hide from the camera here. There's no bad luck in the world, <laughs> but black folks uh, racist because I'm trying to take something good, uh, a positive imagery that happened like Martin Luther King and say he died. And it was all because of that. Like, you know what I'm saying here, Eric? Like there's no, like the way they describe this, it's basically just trying to be like, Oh, well there's some deep meaning behind this. And it actually has to do with Martin Luther King being killed. And that's the white man's fault. Like, 
it makes you feel dumber to have to like explain the obvious things to, to an audience like this. But when you have an artist just trying to disguise what they think is like progressive art, which it actually it comes out as racism, I would say it makes everyone feel dumber. And that's the point of all this is to blur the lines of actual truth. The truth is this person wanted to make um, an edgy piece of art that was, you know, criticizing white people. And then they, they said, how do I do that? And they dial it back and they go, well, there's a quote in this book I can use. And there is a sign that was near Martin Luther King when he died. Like, what does that have to do? Like, what do these things have to do with each other? I don't know. Like I read this quote and it's, and it's from a book from 1987 citational ethics but we're also taking something from when did martin luther king get shot it was it the the 60s or the seven early 70s Six, Eric? i think i think 68 or 69 okay. and so we're melding these things together so that we can justify it and my point in trying to make an example is a stupid one with bernie sanders because you know he <laughs> so famously talks about how he marked for civil rights is we're taking an event a tragic event um which is probably racially motivated and we're connecting it to something, a, a quote that is 20 years apart and maybe connected to it. And we're saying this is a good way. This is a way to justify talking bad about a particular race. But if I did that with an example of a famous white person who got killed and connected it to another quote from a fa another famous book and said, this is a good enough reason to make something racist. I don't think anybody would buy that and they shouldn't. No, no, and this is just because um, they can't, well, of course, they want to continue to try to radicalize people and, and invoke anger, of course, and always blame somebody else. But outside of that, they can never just stand on their, their thoughts or their, their ideas. They can never... Their actual beliefs. Yeah, they can't, they can't ever, and that's why, again, just to bring a full circle, that's why we always see the, the so much censorship is because there's no discussion to be had they can never back up anything they say they just point to racism even um uh, when a couple months ago when i was on the show with a uh, hawk and it's like well remember when he cherry picked he's like well you're still talking about something from two years ago it's like dude you're talking <laughs> about redlining so they yeah can never... redlining and somebody yeah. who died like 30 years ago yeah but... so they can never they can never just stand on the principles because they know it won't hold up. And when you see stuff like this, it definitely makes you wonder. Um, I mean, how did we get the oldest, whitest guy in the country as president? I mean, you could have given up that spot to Kamal Toe Harris or Tulsi Gabbard or um, or even Amy Klobuchar, who at least is a woman. So <laughs> it's um it's just so bizarre, bro. Like they're trying their hardest to keep this their sinking ship afloat. And really, I think a lot of it just has to do with uh, the Internet. Right. Like we know that pr before Twitter, they had control of everything. ABC, NBC, CBS, you know, and a handful of cable channels. And they had they had like, I mean, quite literally control of what could be put out there but now you can you know all of us with a computer in our pocket can start looking up stuff and that's when they start going for that that pocket computer and censoring there's um there's this uh, i think letitia james the attorney general who was running for governor in new york or whatever they're trying to ban results of pregnancy crisis centers coming up on google and stuff it's like they want nothing more Let's like see. think about it they told us over and over again that uh that uh well the right wing the pro-lifers don't care about babies after they're born meanwhile in massachusetts uh, elizabeth warren says that pregnancy centers outnumber abortion centers three or four to one or something like that so they got to get rid of those so then they're then they're their logic can be true. So, well, once we get rid of those crisis, uh, those pregnancy centers, we delete them from the Google searches and we just, we firebomb them and, and cover them in graffiti. Now they don't exist anymore. Now we can say that they don't actually care. It's the same thing that we see with the BLM crowd who uh, walks down the street in New York city and then drinks a, a, an old couple's beer off the table. So now that old couple says, I don't really like these people. And they say, see, we told you you're a racist. And it's like, dude, if you guys were to just, you, I mean, look, we all have the freedom, to be honest with you, to be 100% honest with you, 
that piece of art, it it looks kind of cool, like, you know, the old timey hotel vibe. But the message is just so it's just so insulting to to black people who are basically told that they're stupid and everybody's all the reasons that you have problems is because of white people. And it's in, obviously insulting to white people because they don't have I mean, like there's corny people, there's bad people in every corner of the world. So this is just um, it, it's triggering. Also, to say it would have wrong. to mean that uh, the people who murdered Martin Luther King represent like all white people's beliefs or thoughts because it was a white person who did it. And I don't even also, know if it is. I also, I now I, I totally understand why you wore the BET shirt today. So you can get... It was not connected. <laughs> um, I just didn't thought I hadn't worn in a while. And uh, it's, I, this is like the only place I can wear it, you know? Um, <laughs> um, this is the author, by the way, Jamila Malika Abu Bakari. And I just thought her... First that of all, was pretty her, good. You practiced that a he- couple of times. So I'm looking no, at it. No, I like, didn't. I this watched <laughs> sports. Um there's a lot of African soccer players or some African basketball players. So I know names. Uh, I just want to point out, first of all, her image here is terrible. Like this is the selection you chose, like a close up shadowy figure. But her is she's an artist and writer currently working from Lenape lands. She's accepting invitations to teach sound art, text art and collage by black artists. So she wants to teach you about sound text and collage art so stuff that children can do but only from black artists yeah imagine the arrogancy eric that somebody from a different race would have to have to be like i want to teach at your college but only about white artists or only about artists from a particular race it would be okay i know i'd find i find it weird every time there's a racial identitarian thing going on but imagine the arrogancy. We're just like, no, I will only teach about people from this race. And you will pay me for it, government of Canada. And they will, because it's the government of Canada. We've gone over time here, Eric. Do you want to do one more story? Um, or I, do you want to call it a day? Uh, I, I think we we have to get to the bodega thing just really quick. You want to do bodega? Yeah. Um, Brittany Griner, let's talk about her for 30 seconds before we get to the bodega. Um, they're They're sending former New Mexico governor to go get her in russia hopefully for them she brought hash into the country of russia which is illegal she refused to join the team for the american national anthem she wanted it removed from the games and she had a domestic abuse charge um against her girlfriend or wife i'm not sure she's a a non-hetero woman i'm just pointing that out because you're wondering maybe did she beat up her husband no she beat up another girl and all of this, and it's like, oh, please save me, America. And she can but, barely dunk. And she can barely dunk. She's like six, eight or something. She can it's barely a real, get above the rim. It's a real... Well, she's better than Kaepernick at her sport because she's still in the league. But what they a lot of them do is it's more profitable to play in Russia. It's more popular in Russia. And I've learned this from playing NBA 2K. They talk about this on there. <laughs> um, it's more profitable to play in the Russian league than it is to play in America. So... God bless some of these women. They play all year round for little money and they make more money in Russia. And it might, you might beg the question as to why you would bring an illegal substance into the country where you make most of your money. Uh, yeah. But that's, it is what it is. I Eric. also but heard, the- um, Oh, I can't remember her name, but I watched a video recently about an, a WNBA player who started in only fans. So it's just kind of funny. You know, that's where the, all the money is. So what's this bodega story? We talked um, last week about bodega guy who got fired from his job um, for saying like uh, making an Arabic joke or something like that about the bodegas he was in and complaining about the groceries. Now um, what we have is a I forget where this man's from, but he's an Im- illegal immigrant who owns a bodega and a black man who's got lots of uh, separate charges on under his belt came in, um, was upset that his girlfriend do you know the story better than i do well as as the new york post would tell it um she was because when the story first broke they said bodega owner or i don't even know if he's the owner but bodega clerk stabs man to death over stolen bag of chips which is hyperbolic at at its best but as it turns out a clerk it says yeah yeah so 
Uh, United so they tried Bodegas to, of America. Which I did not know existed until a couple days ago. Um, <laughs> um, so originally they tried to sensationalize it like this guy's crazy and he stabbed a guy because he stole a bag of chips, which would be completely inappropriate. But it does say a little bit about how New York and, of course, California continue to cater to criminals like you should have just let him have the chips. Just let him because where does that end? Right. If he goes in and of he course. steals a bag of chips, it's never going to stop. But that's not and exactly the guy what came happened. into the back. Yeah, exactly. That's so they they get the they get the hyper sensationalized story out there, and then more stories start to come out, and they tell you a little bit more about what happened. And the guy who he, he you could saw saw the photo there. He's clearly an older guy, he's probably in his seventies or something. And this you know thug who's been in and out of Rikers Island uh, accosts him, comes behind the counter, and who knows what he's going to do to him. But the guy just finds the nearest sharp object. And gets him off of him. And Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan DA, charges this guy with murder. And we can say for with almost certainty that if this man would have gotten away with what he was trying to do, he would not have been charged. Right? Like, he would walk of away. Of course not, no. Ex- exactly. So, not only... Not only are they criminal friendly as far as just letting people out. I mean, the guy had already been been in and out of Rikers for robbery and assault and all sorts of stuff. So not only is he getting uh, is he getting treated with kid gloves, but they could have said, OK, uh, you know, double technical. You guys are both wrong. Go away. But no, they they go after this guy because he dare to stand up for himself. And we know that that is not OK in New York City. Yeah, so the guy comes into the back, he's upset about his girlfriend, he starts beating him up, like the first frames are him pushing him into the back, and then he comes up to him, and I believe if I call rec- correctly, he stabbed him once in the neck and twice in the chest, brought him to the hospital, he died. Of course nobody wants somebody to die, but if you go into the property of the, with an agent of the property, which then gives them the right to throw somebody out, to tr- trespass them, which means get out or you're committing the crime of trespassing. I believe you ha- in America, you have the right to defend the property, but I think it depends sta- on the state, but it does depend on the state. But I think if these things started to get challenged more like here, then you would have to go back to the constitution and everything that happens with concealed carry, for example, ends up going back to the constitution and they end up winning. But uh, yeah, like castle doctrine in Arizona and uh, Georgia and stuff where you're allowed to defend your property um to the death now i believe you have to take the chance to leave um if your life is not in danger but in these states in arizona i've looked this up um if the person's threatening your property or the life of yourself or like your res the people who live there then you're allowed to use deadly force um probably not like the same thing in new york i'm gonna go ahead and assume but this guy is beating him up and like yeah. what do you want this guy to do like well it, it's brutal it's it's absolutely brutal and um i think look bro i don't think the guy like that that old guy man i don't think he was out for blood like do you do you think that old guy really was like yeah i'm going to stab this guy no like nobody wants to do that bro well i'm sure some people do but beside that's that's beside the point i think he was like dude this guy is he is coming after me over some snacks at a bodega i have this thing here whatever it is and i i gotta get him off of me and then there's a couple other like the the post has been kind of following this for i don't know a week or so maybe um but apparently there's been a even another update that has different footage or something. I, I, I didn't look into it just yet, but because I think it actually came out this morning or maybe last night. Uh, but there's even more footage that sa- that basically says the guy tried to de-escalate the situation and uh, Simon, I believe his name is, the thug, just wasn't having it. So it escalated a- after the bodega clerk tried to like calm it down and it didn't work. So then it got taken up another level. And the last thing about this is that Simon's girlfriend later stabbed the clerk after the clerk stabbed the guy and it could have just been all over. She goes in and stabs him like in the hand or the the arm or something like that. And she's not facing any charges as of yet. So Simon had prior arrests. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. So 
that, that's just the end of the story. It's like after it could have been over, like you had this horrible situation where your boyfriend just got stabbed. You should probably call 911 or, you know, work on that. And you go back to stab the guy who just took care of your boyfriend. So, and, and she's not facing any charges. So again, the criminals will, and, and I'm not saying she won't, but I doubt it, especially her being a black woman. I mean, we know in New York, that's the hierarchy, right? Like, well, yeah, do whatever like this you want. guy had robbery and assault, served time in state prison for assaulting a police officer in 2016. And which isn't even that long clear. ago. No, the aggressor is clear. But um, the tough on crime, as they're calling him, Bragg, the district or soft the prosecutor. Yeah. Did I say tough? Yeah. Soft on crime. Oh, soft on crime. He the uh, he recently told his office not to seek prison sentences for felonies like armed robbery and drug dealing. And they talked about that recently. That was a big thing about how um, Eric Adams is his name, right? Mm-hmm. He was supposed to be tough on crime, and he does these walks around the city where he's like, I didn't realize it was this bad. And then their first big move is make it easier for people to stay out of prison. And then, but then in this case, a person defending themselves, I think it's fair to say that, they try to put two hundred fifty thousand dollar bail on him, gets reduced to fifty thousand, and charge him for murder and take him to Rikers Island immediately. Yeah. Uh, to, to be Do they think up, he has I'm deep sure. pockets? Do they think this guy has deep pockets? He's he's clearly aging. He's running a bodega. I don't think he's like. I mean, <laughs> I don't think he's swimming in cash, bro. Like, so you you <laughs> claim that you want to help that that you want to help these downtrodden people who can't afford lawyers or can't you know you, the legal mm-hmm. system is tough. He's probably an immigrant from somewhere else but in this case they they don't care he they they need to throw the book at him because he dared to stand up for himself against a thug in new york city which i think um just to tie it in very quickly i know we've gone over time but uh in san francisco they got rid of the the another soros sponsored soft on crime Mm -hmm. da and they got a new one who as racist as this might sound it seems to me like a diversity hire. It's a black woman appointed by the black mayor of San Francisco. But on the plus side, apparently this woman had jumped ship from Boudin and said, this guy's not doing the job. And so she she kind of double crossed him and said, we got to get rid of this guy. So um, maybe we're moving in the right direction, uh, however slowly. But um, I, I don't know. It shouldn't even come to this to the point where the bodega's worker, the bodega workers union or association or whatever... <laughs> is petitioning because first of all if if that works then we still we know even further that public outrage is is going to work right so mm-hmm. in this case in this case I'm all for the public outrage and I think that this guy should probably shouldn't face murder charges because he literally was defending himself from a guy who he didn't did not know what was going to happen cuz you never know you can get one punch and it was like temple. midnight or something wasn't yeah, it or 1 a.m. it's l- late at night yeah or early well, in the morning. I just wanted to I point guess. out that it said, "quote The fact that you're even prosecuting Mr. Alba reveals how per- your perverse sense of justice is not only um, of justice not only protects violent criminals, but actively seeks to destroy the lives of crime victims." Um, and that was signed by two Democrat city lawmakers and five Republicans. Yep. So not a completely even bipartisan thing, but you get two Democrats to sign on anything, and uh, that's a victory. I think usually it's Republicans who are, um, you know pretending that the republicans yeah but eric butler it is what it is i guess um well they have to the The democrats cities they they i think they kind of had to just because they they claim to want to be protecting of the immigrants and the and and i'm not going to say the guy's poor i mean he works at a bodega he's probably doing okay but it, it costs you a quarter million dollars to live in new york comfortably which i assume he's probably not doing so that's it that's it. Um, yeah, we did have stuff about the uh, prosecutor was a district attorney that uh, London breed, which I think is the worst name right now in <laughs> politics. And uh, maybe we'll push it to next week. But for some reason, people around the world are giving their passwords to um, ExpressVPN <laughs> and telling them what their password is. But I digress. Um, anything before we go, Eric Butler, TatenReport.com. My show this week is... Uh, Key and Bexty, who was in the Netherlands as well. Um, who else was on that? Ian Miles Chong, all three of him, Ian Miles and Chong, and comedian <laughs> Casey Rocket, who is very funny. Go ahead, Eric. Anything? 
Um, yeah, well, of course, as always, buy my book. But I do want to, um, and maybe I should have said this at the top of the show, uh, I'm working on a new channel with my buddy Nick, uh, where I'm just going to be right. doing like a little, um, you know, a little weekly rundown of some stories that have triggered me. So go ahead and check out the Alt Reporter YouTube channel, and we're going to try to get those out uh, two times a week. Uh, in fact, the most recent one uh, was uploaded this morning. So, uh, yeah, check that out. It should be should be fun. I can get this up on screen here. Altreporter.com is where you can find some of that. Thanks, everybody, for sticking with us. Uh, 15 minutes past the hour. If you sound like a radio host now. Thanks, everybody, for sticking with us. It's 15 past the hour. We're going to get to the traffic and weather coming up on uopod.com. And thank you for listening on Spotify, Google, and Apple. And Twitch. We will be back on Andrew Says next week after the suspension is gone. <laughs> I really know what's going on.